Welcome back to the Catholic History Show. My name is Brendan Langan, and I am a former Catholic high school history and theology teacher. And today I decided I wanted to talk about Benedict Arnold, but specifically the Catholic history of Benedict Arnold. Uh, Benedict Arnold is probably someone you've heard of, especially, of course, if you were an American. Uh, Arnold was famous as an American general in the Revolutionary War, until he up and betrayed, of course, the Americans, and he went over to the British, and now his name lives in infamy. So today, I thought, you know, hey, this would be uh, an interesting topic. Most people don't wreck it, realize that there's actually a very important Catholic component to the betrayal of Benedict Arnold. So I thought, hey, this would be a good topic. So here we go. Um, I'm going to give a short recap of Ben Arnold's military career and then, of course, his betrayal so that I can shine the light, um, the Catholic aspect on that entire story. Um, but to begin with, Arnold was, of course, an excellent military officer. He commanded uh, great respect from his troops. He was daring. He was bold. He was very good at uh, strategy and tactics. Um, but he was also proud and arrogant, and that actually was would be his downfall, as, of course, it always is. Uh, but he also despised the Catholic Church, and that's something that isn't really known much about. Uh, he was from New England, and he had this very real Puritan strain running through his veins. And it's important to note that this was not uncommon at the time of the American Revolution. Catholics were indeed second-class citizens, especially in New England. So uh, Arnold was uh, this anti-Catholic, but he also was a patriot, and he signed up very early in uh, the American Revolutionary War to fight with the Patriots, to fight with the rebels, if you will, if you're on the British side of this. Um, and he made a name for himself very quickly because he worked with Ethan Allen uh, and they captured Fort Ticonderoga. This was a huge deal. Like, this was big time because what they did was they took the cannons that were in Fort Ticonderoga, which is upstate New York um, on, on Lake George and the Hudson River that comes down from there, and they transported those cannons across the mountains to the siege of Boston. And when they brought those uh, siege can those cannons up onto the Dorchester Heights, which if you know anything about Boston is off the little peninsula thing that was Boston at the time, the British had to evacuate Boston. And so his, he was a major part of that uh, enterprise. Now there's been, a, there's a couple other things I'm going to point out in his military career before we get the, to the betrayal. The other thing, um, very early in the war that he was famous for, was he was in charge of the the Patriots army that went up into Canada, and they lost, of course, they didn't take Canada, but they tried to take Quebec, and he, he had renowned courage, fortitude, um, the fact that the entire army was not completely destroyed is a lot to do with Benedict Arnold himself. So that was another um, part of Benedict Arnold's early history in the American Revolution. He fast forward to 1777, and he is instrumental in the capture of Johnny Burgoyne's army at the Battle of Saratoga. Now, in the history of the United States of America, the Battle of Saratoga is quite possibly the most important, not maybe not the most important, but one of the most important battles in our country's history. And it's very sad that most people don't realize that, because what happened was... The British were attempting to cut the colonies in half by taking the entirety of the Hudson River. They already controlled Canada, and they controlled New York City. And so they sent an army under uh, General Burgoyne, and he was marching down the Hudson River, taking, he retook Fort Ticonderoga, and he's marching down to connect with General Howe, who was in charge of all the British forces at the time, in New York City. And um, what happens is they come to Saratoga, and it's not it's not in Saratoga Springs, the modern day Saratoga Springs, but it's not far from there. I used to live there. It's a very close battlefield. But there was a major battle that took place there, and um, General Burgoyne had to surrender to uh, the Patriots. And this was a huge deal because now uh, the European powers realized the Americans were a serious fighting force. And it allowed the French to actually come in on the side of the American colonies. Um, and I need to do, maybe I'll do like a full documentary or something like that on the Catholic aspect of the American Revolution because it is not taught anywhere. No Catholic schools teach this. You have to go back into the 1800s to historians 
to find uh, good sources on what was going on with the Catholic Church in regard to the American Revolution because it is not taught today. So I think it may, there's going to be several videos about this whole aspect. But again, the French coming in on the side of the Americans was very important for the future of our country because they obviously helped at the Battle of Yorktown, the Siege of Yorktown. Um, the blockade off the York River, which eventually ends the American Revolution, and we win our country and our freedom. Um, also, obviously, the the amount of money that they gave, the support in ter terms of munitions to the Revolutionary Army, to George Washington, was very important. Um, but there were a lot of people in the American colonial, um, in the American Revolutionary Party that were against this, and specifically because they were Papists. The French were Papists. And they saw themselves as, we're getting rid of these English invaders, but at least they're Protestant. Um, but, and we're ex now we're accepting the French crown, uh, and these people are Catholics. So there were a lot of people that were against this. This was, a, this was a major component. And as we'll see, it plays an interesting role in Benedict Arnold's, um, in his uh, final betrayal of the American people. Now, anyway, so that's a little bit about Saratoga. At Saratoga, Benedict Arnold... Uh, he was instrumental in saving the Revolutionary War there. He he led the troops in battle. It was a lot of his bravery and boldness that actually won the day for um, the uh, Patriots. And he, uh, after the battle, he wasn't the commanding general in the battle. And after the battle, he doesn't get the credit he thinks he's due. Now, he's wounded in the leg, so he has to go and recuperate but the general in, in command there was this guy named Horatio Gates. And he was a terrible general, let's just be honest. He was awful. Um, but he gets the credit for Saratoga because he's the commanding general, even though Benedict Arnold was instrumental in that victory. Um, now, George Washington is very close with Benedict Arnold, very, very close. Kind of sees him as a son sort of um, person, like, you know, his little protege. And he knows Benedict Arnold was instrumental in it, but the you know the newspapers and the crowds they they hear about how Horatio Gates did this magnificent thing, um, so that obviously rubbed Benedict Arnold the wrong way. Anyways, he goes and he has to recuperate because he's been his leg's been halfway blown off, and he had, he becomes the military governor of Philadelphia for the Patriots. And he starts hobnobbing with um, the rich people in Philadelphia. And prior to the war, he was a merchant. And so he starts doing some deals um, with the supplies um, in Philadelphia. This wasn't very uncommon at this time, or obviously even maybe in modern times. Um, this kind of stuff goes on. And obviously it's not right, and it's illegal, and he should be brought up on charges. But... The main thing that he does probably wrong is he starts spending a lot of time with uh, loyalists or people that are in support of Great Britain. He starts, like I said, like hobnobbing with these people. And that rubs the Patriots in Philadelphia the wrong way. And so he starts having detractors come out and publicly essentially chastise him in the newspapers. And they bring him up on charges. Well, most of them are trumped up charges of essentially embezzlement and fraud in the city. And um, he he is just he's getting sick and tired of this. Uh, the other aspect, obviously, is the Peggy Shippen thing. But this Peggy Shippen was this uh, loyalist girl he falls in love with, and they get married, and um, she supposedly influences him to become a, a British, uh, essentially um, a British spy. But the the real and there's there's some truth to that, of course. There's, there's truth to that. But the real thing that causes him to go overboard is this it's attack on his pride the the people the the uh, patriots are condemning him and calling him all these names because he's spending too much time with he's not patriot enough for them um he's spending too much time with the british loyalists he's too nice to them so anyways he eventually goes back into a command and he takes um the uh fortification at west point which obviously is now the military academy there uh, at west point but it right now it's it's a patriot. They're building this fortification there, and he takes he takes over the construction of it. Now Washington thought this was strange because this is an excellent military in battle commander. He needs to be in the battle. Why is he going? Why does he desire this post um, in a fortification? But he assumes well, he still needs to recuperate. He's brand new married to this Peggy Shippen girl. 
you know, let them settle in, and then we'll get them, we'll get them back into the battles and fighting again for the Patriot cause. And it's during this time that uh, Benedict Arnold decides he's going to relinquish control of the fortification to the British. And um, he starts meeting with the, the head spy, net, the high, head spy in um, in New York City for the British. They, they have their own spy network, the British do. And he starts meeting with them and starts discussing terms of what he will get in return for turning over uh, the, the fortification at West Point. And it almost works. The British almost take it. But George Washington, actually, himself, realizes pretty quickly what is going on in the process and is able to stop it. <clears throat> and But Benedict Arnold gets away. He flees. So Benedict Arnold, this is in 1780. Um, this is you know, about a year prior to the Battle of Yorktown and the end of the American Revolution. But this was this was incredibly detrimental to the American cause because this was one of our top generals, and he decides all of a sudden it's hopeless, let's give up, and goes over to the British. And in the process, he writes a letter to the American patriots, and in that letter there's some interesting quotations which shine a light on what his argument as to why um, the the New England Patriots need to leave the revolutionary cause and essentially return to you know Britain. All right, so he writes this uh, this letter to the inhabitants of America in 1780. Uh, so right after he decides he's gonna he's gonna join the British, um, and he says, "quote He's talking about the French, and he says, "quote A monarchy too feeble." to establish your independency, the enemy of the Protestant faith and fraudulently avowing an affection for the liberties of mankind while she holds her native sons in vassalage and chains, end quotation. So here you get a sense of what Benedict Arnold's thinking. And again, this was that one line in there, an enemy of the Protestant faith. That was very important because, um, the colonists saw themselves as devoutly Protestant, especially in New England, but also like in Virginia and in the Southern colonies. They were not fans of Catholicism. In fact, in many of the colonies, the mass itself was illegal. And here were these French people, these French uh, military commanders that were coming over and were doing the masses and they were doing all the prayers of the church and they were saying the rosary and they had priests in public. I mean, this was this was tantamount to um, tantamount to treason to a lot of Protestants because they didn't differentiate between, um, you know, if you were a Catholic and alignment to the papacy and treason. They saw that as treason. You have a higher, um, you have, a, there's a higher law than your country to you. It's the papacy. And that was treasonous to many people in the American colonies. So he specifically points to that in his letter to the inhabitants of America in 1780. And um, so, in the 1750s, there was this political journal that came out, um, and it's called the Annual Register. But it was the the chief editor at the time was Edmund Burke, and he works with these two brothers, these Dodsley brothers, and they they start producing this Annual Register. And Burke writes the articles, of course, he writes um, tons of articles for it. But in 1781, the Annual Register has this very interesting quotation in describing ben the reasons Benedict Arnold left. The Patriot cause and went over to the British side. So I thought I'd read, um, I would read part of that to you. Quote, even their last stake religion, he represented to be in such danger as to have no other security than what depended upon the exertion of the parent country for their deliverance. In proof of illustration of that, he asserted a fact upon his own knowledge that he had lately seen their mean and prolific Congress at mass for the soul of a Roman Catholic in purgatory and precipitating in the rights of a church against whose anti-Christian corruptions their pious ancestors would have witnessed with their blood, end quotation. So Arnold actually pointed to the fact that the Congress, many members of the Congress, went to a Catholic mass in, that was said in honor or for a soul that, that was in purgatory. Um, obviously, until the French enter into the into the war, the mass is not being said in Philadelphia. 
But when the French um, come in, they de- they essentially demand that they're allowed to have their masses said when they when they're working with Congress. And so, in fact, Congress, in order to show um, love and support to the French people, actually go to um, a mass at St. Mary's in Philadelphia. And that's what um, Benedict Arnold is pointing to. And obviously, this was a huge, huge deal at the time. This was a big scandal. Congress is going and they're participating in Catholic ceremonies and rituals. And this is crazy. This is popery. We got rid of all this stuff when William and Mary took over England. And um, so this this was this wasn't just some kind of like you know throwaway argument. This he was really trying to strike at the hearts of the American people, and it shows you a dimension to the American Revolution that we have lost um, in a lot of respect. And that is the sentiment of the American people towards the Catholic Church. Um, there was there was a lot of sen- there was a great sense of uh, animosity um, and suspicion towards the Catholics and the French allies, and I think that was, that's an interesting topic. So I just kind of wanted to bring the topic of Benedict Arnold pointing to uh, the French Catholics, who it's, ironically, he's actually responsible in a big way for bringing into the war by his victory at Saratoga, Um, but he saw that as a betrayal of the Congress and um, utilized it in his writings as an argument for why he had to betray uh, the rebel cause. In any event, um, that's kind of the story of how Benedict Arnold um, betrayed the uh, rebel cause, the revolutionary cause, and a little bit of the Catholic history behind it. There, I, I need to do more videos about this because it's a very important topic to understand the, the religious component of the American Revolution. You're not going to hear it um, from conservative or liberal perspectives, obviously, out there, historians. And it just seems to kind of be lost in the wind right now. Um, with everything that's going on is this, there was a very important question as to whether or not um, Catholics should have rights in the new, in the new country. And that if by allowing the French to fight with the uh, revolutionaries, the the patriots, they were not just essentially handing over the country to the papacy. And again, this is, this is a very major component at the time. And I think it's something that we, we need to, especially as Catholics, we need to understand and understand the Catholics in the in the colonies, their perspective towards the American government, towards the Revolutionary War, um, and there's a lot of interesting topics in that. So I'll probably be bringing more of those to the Catholic History Show in the future. But in any event, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and uh, click the bell because then you get notifications when the videos go up. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless.